In this video, we will learn how to create this fire animation in After Effects. So this is the lesson 7 of the explainer animation course and in case you have missed the previous lessons then you can check it out from the link provided in the description and also you can get all the assets, files and illustrations that we are using throughout this course from our website that is again linked in the description and also in the pinned comment. But before moving forward do hit the like button and comment down below because this kind of videos requires a lot of time and effort and your likes and comments really motivates me to make more free courses and tutorials like this. So without any further delay, let's dive right into Adobe After Effects. So let's continue from where we have left in the last lesson. So let's create a new composition. So create on this icon over here in the project panel and let's rename it a orange flame and keeping the rest of the settings as it is. So let's create a rectangle shape. So select the rectangle tool and let's pick a fill color. Let's give it an orange color or a red color and cancel the stroke. And while creating the rectangle, I'm pressing and holding the Alt key to create a Bezier path. After that, open the shape path property or inside the shape layer. And I'm going to select each of the vertices of this shape path and try to create a shape of a droplet like the way flames look like or similar to a fire flame. So I'm bringing the busy handles from the corner using the convert vertex tool. The shortcut key is control plus the alt key. Then the cursor changed like this. And now if you click and drag, you can get the busy handles and using that you can change the curvature of the shape path. Okay, let's rename this layer flame one and let's duplicate this layer one more time. Open the shape path property and this time I'm going to select this entire shape path, not this part, only this part of the flame. Double click on it to get this transform box and just reverse this shape path like this. And then slightly modify the shape path again so that in the area where the shapes doesn't overlap, the area should give a shape of a fire flame. Okay, now let's select flame one and use the layer above as an alpha inverted mat. Now let's apply an effect called wave warp. So go to effects and presets panel and type in wave warp and we will apply this effect. Let's change the wave type to circle. And then let's increase the wave height to about 180 and the wave width to about 800 and direction of around three degree. Let's keep the wave speed as it is and the pinning, I'm going to change the pinning to bottom edge. Well, these settings may vary depending on the resolution of the composition you are working on. So depending on which resolution you are working on, uh, will give you different result here in the composition window. So I'm working on a 4K composition and these are my desired settings. Now let's select this effect from the flame one. Let's copy it, select this layer and paste it over here and now i'm going to change the face let's change it to about minus 180 and this is how it looks so ignore these extra shapes here in the corner i mean we can easily mask it out in the final composition okay now let's apply some effects so let's add an adjustment layer on top of this all these layers and let's start with applying gaussian blur with blurness of around 80 and then matte choker. And let's decrease the gray level softness one to about 4%. And this gives us a nice fluidy effect, exactly what we need from a fire flame. Okay, now let's create another layer of the flame. So go to the project panel, select this orange flame composition, duplicate this composition here in the project panel, and let's name it yellow flame. Let's open the composition window and I'm just going to modify the shape path a little bit. So I'm just going to widen up this uh, flame from both the sides so that the tip of the flame is a bit lower than the orange flame. And let's change the fill color to yellow. Now let's add these flames to the original composition. So get back to the frame four and let's turn off shy. And here we have the fire layer. Let's unlock and pre-comp it. Let's get inside the composition 
and also let's scale up the composition resolution so go to composition settings and just scale up the width and height maybe change the background color to black okay now let's bring the orange flame first and place it on top of this fire layer let's decrease the opacity for now to about 60 percent and let's scale it down and i'm just going to reposition it maybe move the anchor point at the at the bottom and let's scale it down of course we have to remove this so for that i'm going to select the pen tool and draw a shape path around this flame that is it and now this extra shape is gone okay now let's bring back the opacity to 100 percent and now i'm just going to duplicate the flame layer multiple times and reposition it to cover the entire flame okay now i'm going to offset the layers by few frames from each other so that all the frames have some randomness in between each of the frame, flame layers or else if all the flames are animated in the same way it would look a bit weird and you can offset the layers randomly there's no proper rule to offset the layers for random animations like this okay so this is how it looks now now again let's bring the yellow flame on top of this orange flame and let's follow the exact similar process and this is how it turns out of course if you want you can apply a few more effects to make it look even more interesting like uh, let's add a new adjustment layer and then apply radial first blur let's move the center point to somewhere around here change the zoom to brightest amount to about six and let's apply glow effect and now it looks like this but in for this particular project i haven't applied this effect because if i go back to the main composition here you can see it is giving a blurry effect which is not matching with the overall style of our animation so for that reason i haven't applied this technique but if the black background is dark this kind of effects actually looks better and let's check it out from the main frame for one last time all right so with this this scene animation is also done and that's the end of this video in the next lesson we will learn how to seamlessly transition between the scenes using match cuts so that is it i will see you in the next one until then goodbye